Welcome to episode 128 of the Whatnots Review Show, where every week we pick a story and we talk about it. This could be a movie, TV series, anime, manga, comic book, audio drama, all kinds of entertainment. We watch it, read it, listen to it, and then we come back here and we talk about it. My name is Melissa Wilkinson, and I am joined by my co-captain, Kyle Springer. Hello, that is me. It is. Uh, We are doing our thing on Sunday morning like we normally do, but man, I had a rough time getting up this morning. I did not want to get out of bed at all. Uh, but yeah, I'm 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 excited to t- talk about the movie that we're gonna talk about t- today. Mm-hmm. As I mentioned after we got done recording yes. the Captain's Log on Friday, I was like, Melissa, this movie is a wild ride, <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, Oh boy, I haven't watched it yet. I was like, Oh, good, yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> I had <laughs> I'd seen bits of it. As Uh I mentioned to you last week, and I will reiterate again this week. (laughs) I've seen bits of it in an interesting context. Before we mention what we are watching, how are you? How's how's your weekend been? Oh, it's been okay so far. I had a heck of a time in a craft store yesterday, but I've recovered. Sounds like an adventure. (laughs) (laughs) I just went to Michael's thinking I would buy my niece a bunch of little craft supplies for her birthday. So like here's like mm-hmm. cute patterned paper and like colorful tape and some stickers and things like that. Sure. And I just had a problem with Michael's not correctly labeling things or like being specific in their signage. So like I brought things up to the counter thinking I could get them under a really good sale. They're like, no, this isn't going to work. But they told me the wrong reason why the items I combined weren't good for the sale so i had to go back and forth a bunch of times it was Dad's it was lot. awful I, but i eventually I, walked around i eventually walked out with lots of very good craft paper <laughs> is it worth it is it worth the hassle i don't know i'll see what i make out of the craft paper i have very fond memories of going to michael's like with my mm. mom back in the day never really bought much but just as as an art kid, it was just like, oh, this yeah. is cool. And then as I got older, I very quickly realized this is not the kind of art that I like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they don't really have much for me here. <laughs> yeah, it's the kind of art I like. I just, <laughs> I just wish they would be more blatant with putting clearance stickers on things and don't put it yeah. on a part of the item that is the same color as the clearance sticker. So that all, all of us miss the fact that it's a clearance item and we can't understand why it's not rigging up correctly. Yeah, and it's 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 just like I th- yeah, like I stuff like that they're not labeled correctly or they're not like cleaned up cuz like pens are out everywhere on the floor. There's craft materials everywhere and it's always just like someone should do something about this Michael's store. God, this Michael's was like weirdly crowded too. It's like everybody came in and then brought all three that, of their children. That's the thing. Yeah. Like that's, and then it would just be a mess and then no one would do a thing. Oh, well. They're working on it. I felt so bad bothering <laughs> these people, but I'm like, I, I thought I was supposed to get another pack of paper for free. The sign said oh, I could well. get this one for free. Why didn't it work? Well, my weekend has been pretty good. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I finished up watching season two of Stranger, that Korean crime show I've been watching oh. lately. That's pretty good. Uh, and then I started watching the latest season of Fear the Walking Dead, uh, uh-huh. which is a show that I typically I I like it. Like it's it's not spectacular, uh, but I usually like it a lot, especially since I've read a lot of the Walking Dead comics. Um, I stopped a long time ago, but the show is like just now starting to get to the, the spot where it's like, oh, I stopped like right around this thing. Uh, mm. but this show isn't based off the comics. So it, it was just like, oh, this is, you know, neat that I don't know what's happening next. Yeah. Uh, but this season is kind of ridiculous. There's some weird things happening there. I will spare you all the details, but it, yeah, I'm I'm about halfway through right now. But still good, just strange moments. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, what are we talking about 
this week, Melissa? We are talking about a movie called The Love Witch. This came out in 2016, and it is from writer, director, producer, musician, costume designer, set designer, Anna Biller. Yeah, one man army. One woman army. Uh. Yeah, I, 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 I always think it's really neat when like one creator can yeah. do so much on their project and you can just really, really tell that it's, it's their vision. Like this is what they really, really wanted. It's not like, well, I wanted to make a movie about mm. this, but then the director didn't like it. So he took it off and that went, you know, it's just like, no, this is what I wrote what I directed, what I planned it out to look like, what, you know, this is exactly it. Uh, and it's, it's neat to say, say that stuff. But man, like we said at the start, this movie is a <laughs> wild ride. <laughs> so my first exposure to this movie, I had never heard of it before, like a couple months ago when there's this mm-hmm. YouTube channel I follow called Modern Girls with like a U and a Z on the girls that's all about mm-hmm contemporary fashion and fashion as it is in costume design in films a really interesting channel and they do this series of videos that's every outfit somebody wears in this movie and just clips of every single outfit and they play a song in the background they're cool to look at and it, there was like a six minute video of every outfit in the love witch I'm like this is longer than every other video you have on here what is this movie why are there so many outfits and i clicked on it and i'm like oh my god There's so many costume changes. They're all beautiful. This movie, like I couldn't tell when the movie was from because as I mentioned, it's a 2016 film, but it's filmed Mm -hmm. on film and like lit in this uh, more archaic style where it looks like the movie's from like 1972. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's really interesting stylistically. I I have to to, to, to say and back up for for a bit. Mm. I didn't like the film. I <laughs> I I thought it was kind of bad. Um, but just in in terms of just like sheer, sheer, sheer style and what uh-huh. they did, it was amazing. It was brilliant. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, like like you said, it looks like it was made in 1972. With, with the costumes, the way the buildings look, all that stuff, the the set pieces. And then they walk outside and they're like, oh, yeah, my old Honda Civic here from 20, <laughs> from, from, from 2016 is, 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 is here. And it's just like, what the hell is this movie? Yeah, like you, I couldn't tell at first if this was supposed to be a period piece, but then you'll see like, yeah. you know, the main characters drive older cars, but they'll go to the town square. And yeah, that's just like a 2009 Mazda back there. <laughs> right. You know, like she goes, she takes her witch supplies to that a cult store and she pulls them out of a contemporary reusable shopping bag. Like it's yep. not like a canvas tote like you would have had in the seventies and the earth yeah. days. Like, no, that is you reuse, buy it for a dollar at the recycle, checkout. Re- yeah. Which... It's got the sticker on it that says it was made out of reused plastic water bottles. I'm like, that's that bag. What's it doing here? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of funny, but yeah, like I, I, I just think visually speaking, this is absolutely something you should ch- check out. It, yes. it, 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 it's especially if you're into um just just like a little bit more artsy films or like we mm-hmm. t- t- talked about a couple weeks ago we watched season 1 of <laughs> Hannibal. Yeah. Uh and w- w- one of the the things that we mentioned with that is that it it just it looked so decadent. It was like Yes. S- but it was like subtly so like you, you don't necessarily notice it, but there's small details in there that like things have patterns on them that you wouldn't normally notice if you're not looking. This is like in your face of just like, look how decadent this thing is. And yeah. it's 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 beautiful for, for that too. So yeah, yeah the at, first at, shot at least for that. <laughs> check it out. Yeah. Yeah, the first shot where they went to that Victorian tea room, I like yelped because I it's did suddenly too. I was this like, wide, oh God. <laughs> yeah, it's this wide cut. Everybody in the tea room is wearing these beautiful dresses, like they're all in the same color scheme. They all have the same st- pink. style of hat. Yeah, it's just like too, a full too much pink. pink. <laughs> the right amount of pink for me. Big pink fan over here. 
<sighs> but yeah, yeah, it's good. So, um, I should, I, should, I guess we should do like a plot synopsis for people who don't know. I guess we can finish up our g- general thoughts as we g- yeah. do that, and then go on to spoilers and stuff like we normally do. Yeah, Elaine is this young woman who uh, her she says her husband recently left her. And she's moving to the small new town for a fresh start. And she is set on finding love. And she's a witch. Mm -hmm. And she's telling her real estate friend, you know, I think I've cracked the love spell. I think I know how to get a man. And we just watch her work her magic on a sordid man and try and woo them. And the the magic goes wrong and they become too obsessed with her. And then she kills them. Yeah. Yeah. She, uh. Her spells work a little too well, mm. um, and yeah, then she she ends up killing some people. The c- 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 cops take notice, so on and so forth. I j- 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 jinx and witchcraft ensue. Um, yeah, it uh, like like I said, I <laughs> it's not a good movie. Like I the, the plot is. isn't great, but. The other thing I will say is, uh, so I, I think Wikipedia describes this as a horror tragedy, or a comedy horror tr- tragedy. Yeah, I'd say that. Yeah, I, I, I think that fits. I I don't know if I would, well, I mean, yeah, you could absolutely say tragedy. I would just describe it more as a horror co- comedy, because it is really campy. At times, it like the the, the 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 scene where she uh, goes out to the park and just sits da- 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 down, there it, it is filmed with so much camp that all of a sudden this one g- 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 guy just has this like sixth sense that <laughs> there's an attractive woman right behind me. Huh? Yes. Right, and he's just like, I must go t- talk to her, and then it's just like, come. T- 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 to my vacation home in this in, 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 in instant like it's 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 kind of ridiculous in that sense and it, it yeah it's, it's funny because of yeah. like how poorly it's shot but i think it's like it's it's meant to be like that it's not it's not like they were trying and it's just like well maybe mm. mo- movies isn't working out it's like no they <laughs> went for this style in particular and they nailed yeah. it yeah Yeah, the dialogue is stilted. There are all of these preposterous jumps where, yes, let's go to my house. Let's go to my uh, forest house right now. Yeah, like there's all these leaps and jumps and like weird logic and like people will like talk too fast or like stare at something for too long. Yeah, Yeah. like the (laughs) awkward stiltedness of it is really well done and it's so fun to watch. Yeah. Um. But it, yeah, like it, it just, it was almost a little bit too ridiculous hmm. for me. There was a moment, I want to say two thirds of the way through the film, where hmm. I just, th- I threw my arms up and was like, "This is ridiculous! <laughs> like this is right. nonsense!" <laughs> like, yeah. It, yeah. oh my god. Um, but yeah, there, there are some funny moments, but I, I think deep down there's there's actually a really interesting story yeah going on here like i i i i don't think this movie was scary a- a- at all no no um, but it like the idea of this like small town slowly c- kind of being infected by this witch who is using these love p- p- potions to make someone so obsessed at them like that's that's actually kind of scary when you think about it and just like how it can actually wreck you you know you know those people's families or their relationships and stuff like that it's it's like i i think if this was taken more seriously and and i I don't want to say necessarily shot in a different style but like Better dialogue, better writing, all of that stuff and was actually taken with a much more serious tone. It would actually be kind of scary. 
to to, the, to yeah. watch. So it 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 has something kind of bubbling beneath the surface. There. Yeah, there's a potential there for it to turn into a full on psychological thriller at any moment. Absolutely, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I was pleasantly yeah. surprised by this movie. I based on the clips that I had seen, it seemed like more of a fantastical man eater kind of movie like watch me tear through all of these awful men yeah. what a great fun thing for a lady to watch right, <laughs> like it yeah. seemed like it was going to be <laughs> that kind of a power fantasy and in fact it's a much more like nuanced take on relationship power dynamics and like expectations that partners have for each other yeah yeah, so th th there's there's absolutely some interesting things to pull yeah. from it. Uh, for now, let's get into housekeeping, and then we can get into the film a little bit deeper and talk spoilers and stuff mm -hmm. with that. So if you did not know, we have multiple podcasts here at The Whatnots. Uh, you guys can find out more information on our website, thewhatnots.com, as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. Just type in the whatnots, uh, and all of our shows will pop, pop, pop up right there. And if you like what we do, patreon.com slash the whatnots is where you can support us uh, for as little as a dollar a month. Uh, and we have a $3 tier with all kinds of exclusive content on there as well. I know we recently put up a Jackbox party pack mm -hmm. kind of community game night thing. Uh, so that's up there as well. I know we're, we're starting to plan our next thing, which will be a Patreon exclusive thing for crossplay, uh, which is one of our video, which is our video game podcast, not one of. If we had <laughs> multiple, that would be kind of strange. Um, but yeah, we have all that stuff out. We have some uh, some Patreon ex exclusive stuff for the the for the review show, uh, in which we covered some X Files uh, stuff. Yeah. So some more good stuff for Spooky Month. Uh, that's up there as well. Go ch go check it out. But last but not least. Uh, thank you so much to our Patreon supporters at the $5 tier. So thank you so much, Sam, for helping us out and for supporting us for so long. We appreciate it. Thank you for keeping the mics on. Thanks, Sam. Indeed. Okay, let's get into spoilers. That was not the right button. I I, I hit the social media oh, what? things. Okay, take two. <laughs> ah, let's get into spoilers. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Now and Melissa can hear, can hear it now, too. Yeah. I, I uh, surprised you and the guys on cross-play. Uh, I got much of, much less of a re reaction on cross-play. <laughs> um, but all of these sounds and stuff uh, used to just be me that could he, 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 hear them and now everyone else can too so okay here we are in spoilers um is is the part that you thought was too ridiculous where they go horseback riding and turn their heads and then there's just a full renaissance fair over there yes the <laughs> fair. yes it was ridiculous. It's like, what is happening here? And it's just like right, five people having a Ren Fair. And it's just like, what yeah, is going it's every on? It's everybody from that witchcraft circle. So it's like all yeah. people we've seen before. And it's like, how did you know she was going to be horseback was, riding yeah, here? Did she planned? know you were going to be there? And it's weird. And then, and then they like... They, they're like, oh, let's go to the Ren Fair. Let's have some tur turkey or whatever they, they eat there. And they, they sit down and they're like, oh, we should get married. Not real married, but fake Symbolically married. Symbolically married. Yeah, and then they, like, they sing some song and it's just this jolly old <laughs> time. And then they separate yeah. them. And then they just start stripping them. And the the g g guy who is the c cop has no idea what any of this stuff is. He has yeah. no idea that she's a witch, or she he maybe kind of knows, but yeah, he doesn't yeah. know that these p 
people are also mm. witches and stuff. And they're just taking off his clothes and he's just like, huh, well, golly gee willigers, like, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dress me up like a king. I will get yeah. fake married here in the woods on my first date. It just, like, that scene, especially for him in particular, was just homoerotic to the, to like, to number 12 <laughs> up. It was just like, where did this come from? Oh, my God, this is amazing. This is wild. <laughs> this, what is happening? This... See, I knew that was happening from this video I watched that was here are all the costumes in The Love Witch. So I had an idea of the places that the movie would go, but to see all of it laid out in the context of the narrative, yeah, it's it's still great and weird. So, yeah, that, that scene, I was just like, this is ridiculous. But I, I, I want to talk about that character. I don't remember his name. Griff. Cop's name. Griff, you guys know me. I'm t I'm terrible with names. But before I w I, t I, t I t talk about him, I want to back up a bit and talk about the other g g guys, um, uh -huh. and who they are. Because she meets this like professor again. I don't remember his name. Um, oh, uh... but he's he's the first guy that she kind of yeah. uses this p potion on, and he is. This like English literature mm. professor, uh, and he's he takes her to his like weekend vacation home cabin thing out in the yeah. woods. She cooks him this oh, uh, super nice Wayne. meal. Wayne, there we go. The classic Wayne. Good old Wayne. Uh, so she, he takes her to Wayne's world. And uh, it is like she cooks for him. She makes this immaculate steak. Uh, and then in the middle of the steak, she starts to do this like strip tease mm. dance thing. They completely forget about their food. I mean, yeah, like, sex is great. But have you had a great steak? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> uh, um, but like, yeah, they completely ditch the food. They go to the bedroom they do their thing and then he starts feeling really sick because he she has already drugged him yeah and stuff and he just immediately turns into this like helpless child of just like i like i need someone to look after me don't leave me and he's mm. just like sick in bed and c c c can't do a thing and she's just like i'll be here i'm not going a a a anywhere uh and i i don't think at this point she realizes how strong her drugs are uh, mm. her, her i shouldn't say it's part drugs but she she hands him this flask to drink and then he's like what's in it she's like organic yeah organic berries and vodka and hallucinogenic drugs and he's like ha -ha, yeah. okay it's like wow you're a wild one aren't you <laughs> um but yeah, and then she goes in that next morning with his breakfast, and he's already passed away. And so mm. she's just like, well, shit, now what? You know, I guess I gotta bury him in the backyard. And so she's kind of bummed out, but it's just like, like she has this narration monologue thing that, that is like, I've had to bury people before, you know? Like, I... <laughs> This is no sweat off my bed, bed, bed back, yeah, 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 you know. And she's like, ha, ha, "You don't look like you've touched dirt in your life." Because she's this <laughs> like very feminine, yeah. like very b b beautiful. Just like I don't want to get my nails, y y you know, m m messed up and stuff. And she's just mm, like, "Yeah, mm. I've buried people b b b before and stuff." I'm just like, I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> but. That was the first. He was, again, just k k kind of a nobody. I felt like, I'm not sure how, yeah. how you felt about him. I One thing I was struck by in this movie is, like I said, that it isn't just this man-eater fantasy of her picking up all these men and throwing them away. She does do that. We get this glimpse into her past life and like she had an abusive father and an abusive husband. Yeah. And then she joined that witch coven where it seems like the male leader of that coven wasn't treating her right either. And she's had this 
you know, she's been balled up and thrown away and mistreated, and she's just like perpetrating she just this wants cycle to get what's her, what's onto her. all of these guys. <laughs> Hers now. He's like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's time for me to take what I want and not have things taken from me. Yeah, which she says at the end of the movie, but there's this tragic aura around the whole thing. Like, you know, I think comedy horror tragedy is the apt description mm-hmm. for this film. You know, and whenever she's talking, and like she never talks about any specific man in any specific way. Like we know she had that ex-husband, Jerry, but she never mentions like, there was this one thing I loved about Jerry. Jerry and I love to do this together. No, he's just this figure. Every man in her life is just a figure and they're all lumped together. Like, oh, men, you know, men, men do this. Yeah. Like they're yeah. categorized and you know, she's continuing to objectify them the way she has been objectified. Yeah. And uh, it it's interesting because as much of a nobody as I felt Wayne was, I also felt like he was the most, like, intense. Like, he was the most uh, aggressive, I, I, I think, with, with, with her. Um, which, because each guy she, she was with, it, it was, it was Wayne... Was there one more before Gareth? No, it was um yeah Wayne's the first, and then it's Richard, which is uh Trish's yeah, oh, husband, right, yeah, and, uh, and then it's yeah. Griff. Yeah, so it's it's those three, and yeah, I felt like as she continued, the men that she was with kind of became less and less passionate about her or aggressive. Yeah, towards yeah, towards her, uh, which could be her perfecting her potion. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is I, yeah, I, like I'm, I'm not sure if there's much else behind it than that. But that was just something I knew how it is of like he yeah. is like almost <laughs> violently intense of just like I want to devour you. And then uh, Richard, the the second g- 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 guy, seemed to start out like that. But then mm-hmm. when he kind of devolved into like I'm feeling sick, it was m- 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 or so like I think I've made a mistake. Like, mm. I, 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 like, that's kind of the vibe that I g- 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 got. Yeah. From, they all get from sick him. in a little different way. Yeah. It, it, from this magic after effect. What's interesting is that she's, you look at her with Wayne, and she just, like, she's sitting in the town square, like, eating a sandwich. And she just <laughs> sees Wayne, and she just, like, stares at him, and it's like, the spell has been cast. Wayne is being drawn into her. And, but you never see her actually enjoy anything they do together. Like, even when he's like, let's have sex right here in the car. She's like, no, dear, we're going to go inside. And they get inside, yeah. and she's like, I'm she going to cook you dinner. Making but like, out like, right at the door. And she's yeah. like, no, 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 food first. Yeah, but then she doesn't seem happy when she's doing anything. Like, when she, and at first you think, okay, she's like, she's got a plan in mind. Like, she wants to, like, there's this ritual thing where she's like, I will cook the man dinner. You know, I will strip for the man. the man. We will make love. <laughs> yeah. Like there's like, sh- you think she's just like, okay, I'm going to get into the ritual I need to do. And then we're going to see her live and up. Like, no, she never looks happy. You know, she has stated that this is what she wants to do. She doesn't look like she's enjoying it. She's got this permanent, like kind of calculating look on her face. She never, mm-hmm. one thing I noticed is that she never really looks at any of her men it's like if she's looking at them it's like she's looking through them she's just right. staring beyond them and like there's a scene where her and wayne are in bed and she's behind him so of course she couldn't look him straight in the face anyway but she's not even like looking down towards him like looking at the back of his head she's just, like staring into the middle distance and that's a mm-hmm. a type of blocking that's repeated several times where even if the man isn't directly in her line of sight she could turn towards him she could look towards him in any fashion no she's just staring yeah you know, calculating into the middle distance plotting something pondering something like yeah. even when she is where it seems like she wants to be that isn't what she's looking for she's like no this isn't it like the second she gets there she's like nope Gotta figure out my way out of this and on to the next thing. Yeah, it's a- a- almost like they're more like objects. Yeah, I mean, yeah, which, which is yeah, which is what they are. But just like in, especially in in the oh, scenes when she's staring off into the distance, that is 
something you I, I feel like would do if you ultimately don't care for the p- person right or just like yeah i guess i'm not really in love with you or like it's the magic is working on you but it's not really working on me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know you're more just like cool sex was great thanks mm-hmm. that was it you know um but yeah so i i really want to talk about griff <laughs> I think as as the, they got less passionate, I felt like the mm. men also got dumber. And yeah, Griff yeah, is just a a block of meat. <laughs> yeah, all, yes, he is your classic block of is. meat with a uh, like some hair gel. Yeah, and holy moly, if he is not like a grown up ver- version of. Of Bert Woward's Robin from the the nineteen sixties <laughs> Batman, wow, that is that is Robin from from that <laughs> series. Holy moly! Oh man, um, I was looking at him thinking about how much he looked like Rob Lowe. <laughs> I mean, that was dist- <laughs> that was distracting like, me. I couldn't think about me, anything it, else. It it was this because like he's supposed to be the like manly man intense uh-huh. cop yes. like he's he you know he has a gun he's he's shot p- people <laughs> before he he has a yeah. mean stare but his voice is is like mine it's it's like this it's not uh, 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 harsh he's just mm. like well i think that would be swell and it's just like <laughs> that's not what a hardened grizzled cop would would say the manly <laughs> man i'd say and it it was just it was such that but he still had this like passion for like cry and like w- there must be justice right mm. and it's just like this is Robin oh my god and then it completely changed when he when they go to the Ren Fair and he he gets the 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 new like k- k- king outfit. He looks like King Richard from the Robin Hood, the Disney Robin Hood. He looks like the lion. <laughs> He looks exactly <laughs> like him, like the same face mm. and everything. It's ridiculous. I was just like, "This is wild." How did they find him? How did they cast him? He is <laughs> great in all of these the, roles. The cast in the movie is great. Like everybody's so well tuned to this weird, yeah. archaic, kind of stilted, campy acting style that they're supposed to have. I love the amount of like inexplicable British people. Like, it seems right. like we're in some small California town. Like, Elaine moved from San Francisco. Seems like they might still be in California somewhere. Like, your best friend is just British. Uh, and, like, we could, you know, mm-hmm. people can move and take jobs all over the place. But I felt like it added to this sort of extra bit of ridiculousness that none of this is, like, detailed or mentioned. Or like, well, yeah. I studied at yeah. Oxford, and then I did a year abroad here, and I really liked it, and I stayed. <laughs> it's like, no, just uh, this is also part of it. Yeah, it's it's funny. I like, and the the one because there's there's one character uh, in here who is another cop who is kind of uh, who does not come into contact really with with mm-hmm. um, the love which with, with Elaine, um, mm. and he can kind of see things for what they are. It's like holy, yeah, holy, she's a witch. Like she's putting spells on p- people uh she's <laughs> murdered someone like there's this c- coven of witches here in town and he gets hit across the face by g- 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 Riff. yes and that yes. punch scene is so bad it is God, ridiculous the, like the yeah like the blocking of the stage fighting is kind of goofy but i love what he does after he gets hit and he's down on the floor he like tugs at his lapels to straighten him out and he points yeah. at griff and he says you're out of line <laughs> yeah, you're out of line, mister. <laughs> and to have a story that seems so in tune with like old horror comics and old romantic just, just melodrama, old in, in like general. Roy Roy Lichtenstein, like, yeah. I'll never ask Brad for help. Like to have yeah. a, a story that's so heightened in so many other kinds of genres for like one line, we also get this like police melodrama as well it's like yes it's, great. You know, it's like i'm watching the naked gun for one scene 
like it, it it's that and then i i think my my favorite character in the whole movie was another side character at the police station was the black (laughs) officer there if that is not the most stereotypical police like porn setup i don't know what is like this is ridiculous and she is just hitting on gariff so hard yeah like like she's the going for it and yeah he is just having none of it (laughs) it reminded me of like bond and money penny where like they have that good natured flirting but like she means it seriously and he's just like ah yeah maybe i will take you out for dinner sometime but but it, it like I, I didn't even get that vibe. I just got the idea that he is so oblivious to this thing. He's just like, I am not interested in you and your advances. Mm. And then he's he, like, he's he's g- g- getting ca- caught up in in this whole thing with this witch, and he's still sitting there like, I don't believe in love. Love will g- get you k- killed because I'm a grizzled <laughs> cop and I have a gun. And 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 and. <laughs> The, God, that Red Bear scene is wild. <laughs> that's the moment he has that narration where he's where right. he's, he's sitting there like, I don't believe in love. Love is fake. And she's like in his lap and feeding him and kissing him and stuff like that. And you can just tell like he's fine. He's happy. Like, it, it, you know, it's just it, it was such a like a, a stark con. Trast, just a, a strange juxtaposition of like here's the manly man with this like soft sweet voice mm-hmm. he's a grizzled cop but he doesn't believe in love right but he's at this ren fair and it's this fantasy like <laughs> thing and all you know it's just like what is going on with this character mm-hmm. it's wild wild i tell you (laughs) i do want to talk about that other cop whose name i don't think we get but i was watching this movie and i thought nobody's making good choices none Mm -hmm. of these characters are and like elaine is a character who you empathize with you know you feel bad for these bad experiences she's gone through you want her to kind of get her head on straight and like find you know forge a positive path forward for herself but she's not taking any of the advisable actions to do so even yeah. trish her her friend who seems more sensible still falls into the the trap of well i you know i just sort of use my sexual prowess to get this husband mm-hmm. just to get husband you know i don't yeah. care it seems like she doesn't care very much about him as an individual just like oh i'm supposed to have a husband i'm supposed to have a great sex life with the husband it's not working i don't she doesn't seem to care about richard and his individual personality traits whatsoever and then like she elaine is showing her that ring that griff gave her and then she leaves and trish is like oh i still have the ring let me go to elaine's house and drop it off and then she gets further and further into the apartment like there's a, a dish by the door where she could put the ring there and instead she just keeps creeping deeper into the apartment she gets into elaine's dressing room she's putting on all of elaine's clothes and makeup which like is so all right I, I have to ask something. This might be a little, a little, a little bit p- p- personal, but in that scene, when she's tr- mm. trying on the bra and p- p- panties, she puts them on over her <laughs> right. her own bra right. and panties. And it's it's real su- subtle, but it, yeah, like you, you can see, like she has some like nude color yes. set un- yes. uh, underneath that. And like, I, I, it is like... I don't know if that's what I would have d- 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 right. done. Right, if you're like, going if you... that far, why stop that short? Right. Like, if you were putting on her underwear, yeah. why yeah. are you putting it on over your own underwear? Like, if you're going for it, go for it. That's what a the, yeah, weird that's what thing to add. hold like... back on if you're so <laughs> deep already. I was like, did, did anyone else notice this? Did you notice? Is that what you would do? What, what's going on here? No, I... Uh, <laughs> but, I, like, yeah, that like that scene is strange, too. Like, you can t- tell, like, that's one thing that I, I wish this movie k- 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 kind of mm. had more of, is, like, how is this affecting the other people around it? Um, And I think the most we get of that is with this character, is with Richard's wife. 
and they have a conversation at the start when they first meet and they're at that tea room of like oh well i know what you're supposed to do to get a man you just need to give them what they want and mm. and she's uh the wife is sitting there like well i don't know about that like and mm. you know i'm p- perfectly married and sometimes you know the x y and z it might not be exactly what they want but what they need mm-hmm. and that's not what i want but you know and and she just has this odd fascination with elaine of like she's beautiful and she's young and she's free and all and like how why yeah you know? Yeah, um, like there's a a moment when we first meet Trish, like Elaine drives up to her new house. There it seems mm-hmm. like maybe she's renting the top floor of the house. And then Trish, who's like her real estate agent, I suppose, like meets her there to give her the keys. And it's the first time they've met in person. And like Trish takes one look at her and she's like, wow, you're really pretty. I don't mean anything by that. I am married. <laughs> she like holds her ring up. And it's yeah. one just a good stilted, awkward uh, it kind of lends to that vibe that the movie is putting across where it is this low budget film of yesteryear. But that's yeah. a moment that you can read in a lot of ways that this is a a bored married woman who's becoming or how always has been by curious or you could look so at it as like somehow repressed. Yeah. Sexually. Yeah. It or like, not, yeah. You're pretty in a way I wish I was. Like, I look Mm -hmm. at you and I see not something I want to have, but something I wish I could be. Or you could also look at it like, oh, Elaine's, like, sexual aura is so strong, it could work on anybody. Yeah. It may not strictly work on men. It could work on this lady, regardless of what her own proclivities are. It might be that strong. Like, we don't know. Yeah, indeed. There's There's a lot in this movie that's up for interpretation. There's a, mm-hmm. a lot going on in there, which, like I said, is pleasantly surprising. The movie is also a solid two hours long. It's much yeah. longer than you would expect it to be. Yeah, that is also, I think, one of my critiques. I, th- I think, mm-hmm. uh, to be honest, maybe like half an hour too long. Like I, I, I know. Like, but that's the thing. Like, I, I feel like if you shorten it up, you lose a bunch of mm. the camp that is in there. And I think the camp is part of what makes this so special, right? Or you, like, you would just have to, uh, like, cut out a bunch of the scenes and tighten them up and make the dialogue tighter, which would make it a better movie. Mm. But it wouldn't but be the movie it's trying to this, be. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so yeah, like it, it's, it's a little bit too long, but it is so much of a trip that you kind of <laughs> lose yourself in the movie too. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the next thing that I want to mention is this coven, this like witch yeah. coven thing. Cause they are in the town they're in california somewhere i don't remember what town uh, they were presumably in. the town is named eureka in eureka okay um so yeah they're in this town and this t- town seems to be r- 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 rampant with w- witches right it seems to be a known problem yeah. uh in the town or uh, and uh like they they go to this like burlesque club and that's like mm. one of the local meeting places for mm-hmm. the witches but they're also kind of like not liked there they're they're just like ah oh, yeah those ones there those are the witches <laughs> the witches <laughs> right you know like there's them, this you know? like there's a guy who you figured would have been like the coot of the town you know just like oh that's crazy ned just always yelling about witches like you see this guy start yelling about witches somebody else is like you know, he's always saying that about the witches in the town. It, like, like, oh, no, this is a known thing. We all yeah. experience feelings like this about witches or know somebody who does. This isn't just, like, one conspiracy theory man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, 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 they have commercials in the t- t- town, like the mesothelioma commercials that's like if you have experienced <laughs> witches please c- 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 contact it. <laughs> yeah uh no but um yeah like they 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 have stuff like that but she runs into into the local coven there and yeah it's it's both like what you would ex- expect from a movie like this but also something i wasn't really expecting 
um because it is it's like it, it's 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 all still shot you know it, it looks like it's in the late 60s or 70s mm-hmm. and uh but those kind of movies i often like the, the the sexuality in that stuff is often not there right it's mm-hmm. it's not shown it's not depicted or something like that when they show the scenes with the coven there's full on nudity there's like yeah. all all that all 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 sorts of stuff and it's not in i mean it, for for the most part isn't in a sexualized manner no. there are some things about uh, the character of Elaine and what she is doing that is sexualized. Um, but it, I, it's also odd that she is uh, shown nude, but it's more so implied. There's a few nip slips, but like, it, it, like it, her, the the wig that she has on somehow miraculously is like magnetized <laughs> to her nipples, and her head yeah. d- doesn't move at all. So you can't really see her naked. Mm-hmm. But there's p- 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 people around her that are, and there's some more sexual things that she does in the ritual. But it's this weird combination of like it looks. Like what I would expect from a movie back there, but I'm not familiar with movies from that time period that no. picked this kind of thing. Um, so yeah, like I, I, it was it was just this weird, uncomfortable feeling hmm. watching those scenes. <laughs> I. I thought the nudity was filmed like kind of naturalistic, like it never went out yeah. of its way. To show any nudity, but like, you know, like those shots of the coven. It's like, yeah, all those people would be like standing in a circle. Some of them would be nude. It's like, yeah. For the mise en scene, if it makes sense, for that there's like a butt in it, the butt is there. But we're not going to put in a butt that the mise en scene doesn't call for. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, like there, 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 there is that stuff, but the most like sexual stuff you get. Mm-hmm. Is when she when Elaine is doing her strip hazes and the guys are fawning for for her and again most of that she's in lingerie or yeah. you know some sexy out 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 outfit and again once she does finally take everything off you can't see it like yeah it's it, it's it's oddly not as sexualized as i think a lot of movies nowadays would make it mm-hmm. um so i i thought that was interesting yeah too. it's about the act of revealing yourself more right, than it yeah. is about here it is here's the finished here's product the, here's, here's the titties all right yeah 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 the first sex scene that she has with wayne i thought was pretty good <laughs> as like a, a sex scene and that has this real emotional component to it in mm-hmm. and like wayne's been drugged which is bad don't like hand a flask of out drugs of his mind. to anybody yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah but like she's when she goes on this date she's wearing this like black trench coat dress and it's pretty mm-hmm. short and pretty tight but it's not like an overtly sexual outfit and as she's slowly undressing, she opens it up and the black outfit, entirely black outfit, it's yeah. lined with this bright rainbow striped fabric. And like we're seeing things through Wayne's drug division. So everything's kind of got like lens flares and soft focus and all these kind of lighting effects on it. Mm-hmm. And she opens her coat and those rainbow stripes, he like literally like backs away, like, ah, it's so beautiful. <laughs> and he's talking to her and he's like, you have two sides to yourself. You're this quiet the black soul that you show to everybody. Mm-hmm. But the yeah. rainbow, who do you show the rainbow to? And she's like, I show the rainbow to you, Wayne. <laughs> Which was... I like that emotional side of it. And it's not a sincere emotional side. You know, neither of them. She's not doing this as an act of real sincere love. And he's not appreciating it as an act of real sincere love. But it, there's, it touches on the aspect of it. Of It's not just purely mm-hmm. physical. It's like I'm when you get into an intimate relationship like that with somebody, you're revealing a part of your soul that is exposed to them that would not be exposed to anybody else. It touches on this more 
spiritual intimacy. Yeah, yeah. Which I it's, think was a, a powerful thing to add to a, a otherwise like physically dazzling sex scene. Yeah, yeah. It, it, there, there, there are some interesting choices here. Again, as much as I thought the movie was not a good movie, that just the art, the visual stuff in there is great. It's phenomenal. Yeah. There's a lot to dig out. Um, but yeah, strange stuff. Did did you have anything else that you wanted to mention with the with the coven? Oh. Oh, I thought you were going to say about the cop because I started talking about this a while ago and didn't pick it oh, back sure. up. Yeah. I was just going to say that to like in a movie where so many people like wind up making very bad decisions, as minor of a character as he is, I feel like Griff's police partner was like the one character who had a solid head on their shoulders. Right. It's like yeah. we barely know this guy, but he seems stable. <laughs> and I appreciate any time we check in with him. Like he's yeah. not going to get wrapped up in any of this. He doesn't have the opportunity to, but I also feel like he's, I don't know, uh, intuitive enough that he would not. Right. Like that's the thing that I want from stuff like this is mm. I want the world building. I want to yeah. see these side characters and how it's affecting them and the like relationship t- 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 tension between that. Cause uh, I mean, I mean, something that they didn't really address in this film, they went with a more, like, traditional sense of love, like, bet- between a man and a woman, husband and mm. wife kind of thing. But there is different aspects to love. You can love mm. someone not in a physical, romantic, you know, sexual sense. Yeah. So, like, how, 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 how does the love witch affect those relationships like that that's that would be interesting to yeah see. and i think the relationship between the cops would have been one to follow in that sense of like they're partners in mm. one sense right like that you know how how is how are they being affected by what this witch is up to would be neat so Yeah, yeah. Like, is her sexual and, like, magical magnetism throwing things off for people that she's not trying to affect? Like, there's a scene where she's walking down the street and, like, three guys in a row, like, turn and stare at her. And she Mm -hmm. pays them absolutely no No mind. mind. They're not what she's looking for. They don't have whatever it is, I guess, Wayne has. (laughs) I don't know what she (laughs) sees in Wayne, but these guys don't have it. Yeah. But yeah, like what, what were these guys affected for the rest of the day? Was there some magical after effect to yeah. them or were they just gawking? Yeah, do do they suddenly break up with their girlfriend yeah. because because they they've seen someone so much better now that, you know, like their current relationship pales in comparison? Like mm. I, yeah, I, I who knows. That that's stuff that I want from this. Yeah, I have a lot of questions about how about the the magic systems. What yeah. are the after effects? Yeah. What resources do you need? Um, let's see. The uh, other thing I wanted to ch- talk about is how this c- kind of wraps up on itself. Um, throughout the film, one of the things that Elaine is doing, just kind of in her spare t- 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 time, is painting. Uh, yeah, it, it seems like she likes to paint, and it, you know, it's it just uh, uh, something she, she does. I, I also want to was... say that whenever we, whenever we see her painting, she like dabs a brush in the paint, but then in the close up, like that is a it's dry just brush, just brushing dr- dr- against dr- dry. a completed yeah. painting. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was kind of cheesy in a, a fun, on purpose way. Yeah, abs- absolutely. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, like I. I, I, I like that we got to see stuff like that. And mm-hmm. she ends up working on this one painting where she is, or it, it, I'm ass- assuming it, it's it's her. I, I don't know if she mm-hmm. knew it was her as she was yeah. making it, but yes. it, she's working on this painting that there is this woman standing over this man uh, that she has like stabbed him in his chest and ripped his off. Hard out, and it's just kind of this weird, ominous painting that she's working on. And I think for the most part, you can 
kind of just chalk it up to witch stuff, right? Mm. Like, this is just, she's into the macabre stuff. I don't know. Um, but at the end, yeah, she's starting to have this conflict with Griff, who is finally starting to come to terms with, you're a witch, you killed someone like I like we can't be in a relationship because of this. And there's this like in in intense scene and he has, you know, he has this moment where he's staring at, at her and he's he looks like yeah. he's about to do something. Uh, and then he almost has this moment that I, I in in t- interpreted as. Well, you know what? I'm surrendering. Like, despite all of that, despite this, I'm. I might not like it yet. I might not believe in love yet. But I think we can make it work. Because there's a scene where he looks like he's about to, like, hit her or do something or arrest her or who knows what. Mm. And then all of a sudden, he just gets up and p- pushes himself back on the bed and lays down almost as a signal to her of just like fine let's have sex uh but then she gets on the bed and stabs him and rips his heart out <laughs> right and, and 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 then it's this like mirror of this painting that she has mm. been working on of that what was almost a prophecy right of like yeah like this is going to be you you are going to uh it, you, you, you know kill someone that you actually do truly love because with griff i think we spent the most t- time with him the potion I, I you know didn't necessarily drive him insane or to the po- 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 to the point of dead de- de- death so i i think like it it worked with 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 him. it finally worked I, kind of I but she was still just like not like she was not in the right spot i think mm-hmm. now with that thoughts i i interpret it as like he gives her this hard stare and i talked about how this movie has mm-hmm. a lot of characters looking through people and not at them. But it seems like this time he's really looking at her. And I read it as your magic's not going to work. Like he's not immune. He's not susceptible to this anymore. Like you're not going to get this love spell that you want. And then when he lies down on the bed, I thought that as a statement of, I mean, we can have sex one more time before I take you in for murder. (laughs) <laughs> this yeah. diminishing of no I'm th- I don't love you I don't like you I'm not giving you any kind of mercy we're not dating anymore we're gonna have sex one more time and like that kind of wrecks her the- yeah that, that, that makes sense because she's that, been that in sense. search of Go ahead. she's been in she's been in search of love in this very vague and cu- in kind of archaic way like it's very sex based. The only and she makes that dinner for, uh, for Wayne, which can be a, a loving, sincere, nice thing to do for a partner. But she, it's caged yeah. in this like mid century. I must cook dinner for my husband. This is my duty. This is my role. And there's a scene where you hear must give all him of these what things. he wants. Must must pleasure him. Right. Yeah, and like you hear like echoing in Elaine's head at one point, like the things her ex-husband would say to her and her ex-husband, she like, she talks about how, like how much they loved each other. And then he left, but uh, we see she poisoned him. She poisoned him and she killed him, but she keeps mm-hmm. saying he left me. He left me. <laughs> and we, and we don't know what the conditions of that were. If like he did something to disappoint her, if this was the first instance of her going after a man not finding what she's looking for and just killing him. But then later we hear this audio flashback of him being like, Elaine, you've really got to take this more seriously. This is the third time this week that dinner has been late. You can't have dinner be late anymore, Elaine. Why is the house such a mess? Have you combed your hair at all today? God, you're getting fat, Elaine. Like all of these awful things. So like there is, 
there's no real love anywhere in the film. There is sex and there is duty. There is this transactional thing where it's like, if I cook dinner for man, the man will give me sex. If I give man sex, he will give me some sort of pampering, some sort of care, some sort of sense of being well kept. Yeah. And she, she never gets there. She never gets anything close to it. And I think, but the illusion is there. Even if we as a, a more well-educated or, you know, just, uh, living in a future time when we know more about relationships and like, truly being good to and with each other. We're like, mm-hmm. no, you, don't, you don't just cook steak for man and then have sex with him. Like you can, but there's a lot more to it than that. It's not, right, you yeah. know, it's more of a, a natural process, not this like transactional checkbox sort of thing that you have going on. But like the illusion's still there in her mind. And I, I interpreted that as way as um Griff being like, I'm, I won't love you. I will have sex with you, but it is overtly, devoid of even the illusion of love that you've been living under and like yeah. that's too much for her and she thinks like if i can't get any closer to this fantasy that i've been after i'm just going to kill him i'm just going to keep doing this i just see like none of these men are like real people to her mm-hmm. she's they're just like these attempts they're just these experiments you know it's like if you're trying to you know if like she tried to cook a good steak and the steak burnt she'd throw the steak away like she wouldn't think about the inner life and the needs and the wants yeah. and the traits and the other relationships of the steak it's just like oh, that wasn't the dinner i wanted i'm gonna throw it in the trash the relationships like, just... of the steak that's right. something i want to see a whole movie about a steak and its relationships <laughs> new from Pixar. This is my cousin Vinny over here. He, you know, he he was a good good guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's absolutely her character. I I, I think mm. now that you mention that, I, I think uh, I, what it's reading to me now is that they have this whole conversation about which craft is more so a. Uh, like how how can you impose your will on things? Mm-hmm. I I I don't know if they use those exact terms, yeah. but it's like having the strength of will to make this stuff happen, right? Mm. Um, and so yeah, I I think that is the thing. Like here is Griff, a character who does not believe in love, uh, and while she is maybe perfecting her. Pu- 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 potions and it started to work on on him it's starting to have some effect i think at the end of the day his will is also yes. so strong so in one sense without him really knowing it he's also performing some kind of magic right on on, on yeah on her just to, just to kind of cancel it out like 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 you said, like, hey, your magic won't work on, on me. Um, but that that makes sense. That's an interesting thing. And then, like I said, once she realizes the stake is burnt, it's like, well, okay, this is no longer a good stake. Let's just toss it out. To and me, the, I spent a while trying to figure out, like, what this movie was about. Because, like I said, it, it ended up, like... You can tell like 15, 20 minutes in, like, oh, this is a lot more complex than I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. And like, I thought it was going to be this sort of empowerment tale of uh, cliche as it might be. I'm going to brush aside all these men the way like I've been brushed aside, you know, and which is something she talks about and something you mentioned, like she's had men take what they want out of her. And now she's like, now I'm going to do it. And, mm-hmm. But the narrative doesn't treat that as an empowering thing. It does have this tragic air to it that, like, she's just continuing this cycle of, like, failing to see people as, like, whole beings. That they are just, like, they're means to an end. They're objects. They are the check marks that fill the little checkbox of this life she's trying to design for herself. And if they don't work, she just completely erases them from her life. And she... Yeah. Put, transfers the blame onto him. Uh, I mean, like, um, 
like Jerry, the husband, Jerry was a bad husband, but like Wayne was an, an okay guy, but it's still like, oh, Wayne had to leave me. It's like, you killed him. You made him leave you. And like when she makes that witch bottle and she places it with him, she's like, now part of me can be with Wayne forever. It's I, not so- about. Mm? Go ahead. No, head like it's thought. not about Wayne. She's no permanent a personal attachment to Wayne. It's just an act of I want a part of me. I want to be significant. I want to be important. I want to be the kind of woman that a man would want with him forever. Like she doesn't care about Wayne. Okay. She cares about the stuff that Wayne might symbolize. That's why she does that. Because that 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 was something that I don't think I necessarily understood in the film of just like why why did she make that concoction of her like used tampon and urine and all these like gross things that just like why but then why bury that with him like what was the significant and i that that was just something that i didn't necessarily understand um but yeah i i guess that yeah there's a combination of her like killing these men and writing them off, but going through this ritualistic thing of a part of me must be with him forever. Mm -hmm. We shared a true love once briefly to me, this movie, I think that the message, the message of it is that it's got all these kind of fairy tale trappings to it. Aline is a woman who fantasizes very much, but it it isn't a fairy tale. It isn't a fantasy. It's a cautionary tale. We're not supposed to do anything that Elaine does, except maybe dress like her, which is a very good goal. It's the movie to me was about you can have fantasies. Fantasies mm-hmm. are fun. That can't be all you have. You have to have fantasy paired with reality and a true, open, honest understanding of the person you're with and a sense of consequence, you know, for both Elaine and for all of the people in her life, you know, Jerry was trying to treat her as this fantasy of a wife and expecting these fantastical things from her and not looking at her as a whole person who like has her own wants and needs and deserves respect. You know, the, the coven leader was kind of objectifying her. And now this is something she's continuing to do to other people. It seems like that's what the movie wants is like okay daydream all you want like have like oh i wish i had a man who could do this and wouldn't we have a relationship like this but it's yeah you can think about those things those are nice but there's a whole real world out there that you have to contend with you can't just keep running from fantasy to fantasy and is trying to escape reality by stabbing it and burying it in the woods yeah it man there, there's 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 so much within this. Yeah, there I, I is a lot of complex stuff in there. Um, I I don't know if I have much else to say with this though. That we haven't really already said, or is just a re- 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 repeat of a, mm-hmm. a, 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 a of a theme that we've already t- 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 talked about. Do do you have? Final thoughts, something else that you Um, want to talk about? (laughs) I don't know. Is there anything in the art style you want to talk more about? Like the paintings in Elaine's house, her beautiful purple bedroom? Uh, The whole house was purple. Yeah, it's Um, this like Victorian Gothic. I think the house like is also purple. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so oh so I looked this outside. movie up on YouTube because it is like fairly complex. Like I wanted to look at what are people's analysis videos on this? What were the findings mm-hmm. other people had? And I found a couple of them that were pretty good. But I like one of them talked about how people like critics kept comparing this to like beyond the Valley of the dolls and all these kind of, like it was a contemporary deconstruction of like old sexploitation films. And then it looked at the movies that uh, Anna Biller actually cited as her inspirations. She's like, Oh, I no, I wasn't thinking about beyond the Valley of the dolls. I was thinking about this uh, low budget, quiet woman's melodrama. And it's a video about how, uh, the love which is about the erasure of feminine milestones in film history 
in that people keep comparing it to all these very like, yeah, there's a sexy lady in it, but it's like a, a man's direction of a sexy lady as opposed to like a, a portrayal of a more sincere, well-rounded sexual woman story. Oh, I found some neat stuff. But when I looked this up on YouTube, I mostly found makeup tutorials, how to steal the love witch's look, how to dress like the love witch. And a couple of videos that were like, I rebuilt the love witch's house in the Sims. <laughs> yes. Great. <laughs> this movie I think is going, I hope it does stand the test of time and remains like this kind of cult classic, just in terms of its aesthetic inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, it, it is one of those things that I think is like oddly out of t- time. Like there, there is no real mm-hmm. time period it's set in because yeah, it is contemporary t- times for you and yeah. I, but it also there's seems a cell like phone it was in filmed it in the sixties. Yeah, uh-huh. so I, I'm sh- I'm sure it will stand the test of t- time for a while, um, but yeah, just some odd choices, strange <laughs> things, wild scenes. I don't. Uh, yeah. There, 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 there's a lot. There's a roller c- coaster of stuff here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. and it's a visual absolute delight. The music's great too. Like on a technical side, this movie is so impressive, mm-hmm. and I think the visuals of it, beyond just being fun to look at, made the movie feel. Even if it is tragic, it didn't make the movie feel pessimistic. Like I was talking about how I felt that the movie wanted to say that you can't live on fantasies you can't live on fantasies alone like right. there's it's so lush and lavish and like every costume and like every set is so beautifully crafted like it, it seemed to support that yes it's fun to dress up it's fun to make believe it is fun to construct a fantasy go ahead and do it it's a nice place to spend a little time but remember that can't be where you live all the time Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, reality still exists out there. Like the 2009 Mazda sitting in the parking lot outside of this cute, you know, vintage looking witch shop. There's still a reality out there that needs to be paid attention to. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, do you want to move on to recommendations? Yeah. I think uh, the one that I, I have two things that come to Mm. mind uh if you liked this to go check them out the first thing i mentioned last week when you pitched this uh go watch elvira yeah you you know go go watch some more spooky ladies doing spooky things and Mm -hmm. taking their sexuality into their own hands uh and yeah that that, i think that one's fun here's a curveball here's my next okay okay go watch Spider-Man 1 and 2, the Sam Raimi ones. I understand this, yes. Yeah. Uh, So in the same way that you mentioned this is like old romance comics and Roy Lichtenstein paintings and stuff, Spider-Man, the Sam Raimi Spider-Mans, I I guess you could put the third one in there too, but we all know that that one's so bad. Uh, It has its merits. At least go watch the first two because those those Spider-Man films p- 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 pull so much from the old like Golden Age uh, Spider-Man comics, like the, the the Stan Lee, Steve Ditko Spider-Man stuff. Where yeah, it does also feel like those older comics, not a new modern in, 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 interpretation of of the character and stuff and yeah it's it's oddly similar in the camp in the uh just the costume design and set pieces and and just like yeah yeah, like it's not about the the same thing in in the slightest right (laughs) but yeah there's just this weird similarity with that there so go watch (laughs) spider-man i understand yeah this is it's similarly like so very heightened that it becomes it's so Mm -hmm. dramatic that it becomes silly and you've got this main character who's like why must i live this way yeah but i because we will we watched uh spider-man 2 as well as Mm -hmm. captain america uh for episode 100 of the review show 
uh, I believe, right? It was episode yes. 100. Yeah, yeah um, we each picked what we thought was the best superhero movie, and Spider-Man 2 was my nomination. Yeah, uh, but that was the, the, the thing, and I, like that was the the critique that I, I came away with that, that time, is that this is actually a brilliant interpretation of Spider-Man, mm-hmm. but it's of the older comics. Uh, yeah. Mixed with Sam Raimi's kind of pedigree for horror and stuff mm-hmm. like that that doc ock scene when he first like becomes doc ock is terrifying right and it is the kind of scary stuff that i think we see in films like this in the love witch or films of this the, the, the of a similar ilk right where it's just overly dramatic there's a a shot of a character for just a little bit too long being like ah you know y- yes uh, and and stuff like that it, it, it it's good go go check it out uh, i so. would recommend the movie practical magic okay which is a a sweeter more wholesome take on i am a witch i have tried to do love spells they haven't worked I killed a guy, and now this handsome police officer is investigating me. They're weirdly similar. Practical Magic is a beautiful... It's made in, like, the late 90s. And it's mm-hmm. in, set in this small town in this big Victorian house. More great houses for you to look at. More beautiful outfits. Uh, the whole movie is just dreamy and, like, visually pretty. Wow, it's such a nice, peaceful, chill movie. Like, it's spooky enough. And, like, when it gets to the horror aspects of it, like, it's about Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman, and they're wis- they-, they are sisters and witches. And Sandra Bullock, like, stays in their small town with their old witch aunts and, like, you know, uses her magic herbal spells to, like, just make, like, nice... Uh, body products for the people like boy the shampoo really works that i bought at the strange little woman shop and then nicole kidman has like run off for a more exciting life and she comes back and she's like i my boyfriend's uh he's become obsessed he's crazy he's crazy about me and he's crazy we have to do something about this Mm -hmm. and they inadvertently kill him and then they try and raise him from the dead (laughs) because <laughs> they're like oh, okay. we don't like him but we can't have a murder on our hands so they try and raise him from the dead and the spell goes awry that's funny <laughs> it's an interesting film I, I just watched it a couple of weeks ago I still really dig it Um, I would also recommend have you heard of the movie Mandy I've heard of it that's with Nicolas C- Cage right yeah, yeah. I Came almost out, pitched like, it a this- couple years ago Ish. I think so. Was it earlier this? Oh, maybe it was Color Out of Space. There's some really recent Nicolas Cage movie. One. When was Mandy? Oh, Mandy was 2018. Yeah, still pretty in okay. recent. Okay. This is a movie where Nicolas Cage and his wife live in this like small town. Seems like maybe it's like upstate New York or somewhere. He's a logger. I think she's like an illustrator. She like lives in this gorgeous little cabin all day. They have this idyllic life. They're really in love with each other. And then this cult comes through town and kidnaps the wife and Nicolas Cage has to get her back. But the movie, it is set in the 70s. It does have this like vintage pulpy look to it. Mm -hmm. The movie's gorgeous in that it's very dark and very moody and like very dramatically lit and very chilling and violent. (laughs) It is a horror movie. It is a okay. rough watch if you're, for certain people. But visually, it's so fascinating. Like, what a really evocative, odd, like I said, pulpy feeling film. So those are two other takes on gorgeous, weird, magical things. And then if you just want to look at pretty stuff, like just eye candy, there's a woman on YouTube named Christine McConnell, who is this mm-hmm. like... She wears a lot of like vintage mid-century dresses and does her hair up in a big bouffant and like wears all this makeup. Like she's one of those women who fully, yeah, fully goes for that aesthetic. And she's this craft master. Like she 
and she lives in this beautiful house where she's like designed all these parts of it, like every little bit of wainscoting and like every built in shelf. And like, yeah, that's a cult, a couch I upholstered myself. Oh, wow. She does these videos of like, yeah, watch me upholster this couch. And it's all this like traditional craft work, but also it's spooky. She's like, yeah, I'm going to embroider a bat on the couch. <laughs> okay. You're going to watch me sense. do an Good oil stuff. painting of uh, me as a, as a ghost <laughs> communing <laughs> with the ghost of my favorite cat who died. <laughs> They're gorgeous. <laughs> and the videos are like shot really professionally, really well. They've got this sort of like spooky dreamlike music that just sort of wafts over you as there's the montage right, of yeah. her like painting or sewing or like constructing a gingerbread house that's a ho- elaborate haunted house okay yeah that's a good recommendation yeah look at like christine it. mcconnell I like it good stuff yeah uh melissa it is my yes. turn to do the pitches for this next week um, yeah, and those will be our, our last ones of Halloween month. Yeah, uh, which means in two weeks we will get back to our, uh, yes. our irredeemable uh, co- comic. Uh, we did part one, which was the first four volumes last month. Uh, we typically do those at the end of the, the month, which I, I, I think it's still kind of working out. Well, no, because mm-hmm. the... Yeah, I guess we would be recording Irredeemable Part 2, November 1st, so. Yeah. Whatever. Um, but, yeah, so for next week, I mm. at first was going to pitch scary movies, but, like, actual, like, scary ones. Like, like yes. we, we've, we've, we, we did yes. Hannibal, which is gruesome. Mm. Maybe not necessarily like scary, scary, but then Frankenstein, Agent of Shade, not scary, kind of goofy, Witch, not scary. Yeah, um, but I, I, I ended up finding a theme of some, uh-huh. some things that I really enjoyed. So I'm gonna go with that instead. I okay. am pitching you three foreign horror Netflix shows. <laughs> Very specific. Okay. Yes. Uh, so the first one is from India. And it's ah! from Netflix India. It's a show called Typewriter. Um, Ooh. Yeah. And this uh, it says the story follows a group of school children uh, who live in Bardez, Goa. And the inquisitive friends form a ghost club and decide to seek a ghost at an old haunted villa in their neighborhood as their first mission. Their curiosity stems from an old story involving an old man who died writing a novel called The Ghost of Sultan Pur. Uh, however, before the children are Able to discover a ghost, a new family moves in, and the legend of the villa resurfaces in a new frightening way. That's mm. pitch number one. Uh, so pitch number two uh, was actually recommended to me recently because I had been watching uh, a Korean crime show called mm. Stranger. Uh, and I mentioned one of the actresses uh, in there, Bay Dona, I believe is how you say her her, her name. Uh, you guys might know her from Sense Eight. She, mm. she was in that show. Um, this one is a Korean uh, political period horror thriller uh, <laughs> called Kingdom. Um, okay. And it is a, it's basically a zombie story, but it's set in ancient Korea. Uh, and wow. it's, yeah, it's also like a political thriller mixed in with that. Um, but that one, let's see, pull up the Wikipedia here. Um, synopsis set during the Joseon period three years after the Japanese invasions of Korea uh, the first season depicts the story of crown P- 
Prince Li Chang, uh, who stumbles across a life-threatening political conspiracy while investigating the spread of a mysterious plague. Um, and there you go. So I, sh I should mention the first pitch t t mm. typewriter is only five e episodes long. It's a sh short one. Um, Kingdom currently has two seasons out on Netflix, but they're only uh -huh. six, <laughs> six episodes each. Uh, so if we wanted, we could potentially watch the whole thing That's mm -hmm. on, on there because it's only it would only be t 12. Um, but then pitch number three is a Dutch uh, horror huh. show called Aries. Uh, and this, there's, from what I've, the, like, looking up a little bit of research on this, it's hard to do a synopsis without getting into plot points. So here's what the Wikipedia huh. page says, and then I'll read you part of the episode one synopsis. Oh, I'm looking at it, yeah. It says the first series uh, follows Ro 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 Rosa, a first-year medical student in Amsterdam, as, as she joins a secretive student society called Aries and slowly learns what they really are. And then episode one synopsis, uh, I'm going to skip the first bit, but I do have to say that it looks like there is a rape scene in a a episode one it starts out with that so might be a little graphic for some mm. people there but it says uh the biracial first year medical student rosa is intrigued by her longtime f f friend jacob's involvement with involvement with aries in exclusive student society Against J J Jacob's urgings, Rosa seeks out the society and consents to being recruited as their novice. She, mm. Jacob, and a group of others are transported to the Ares Society building to undergo hazing. Uh, meanwhile, Rosa's mother harms herself during a psych a psychotic a a a episode as Rosa is not there to watch for her. Uh, so I, I watched the trailer for this one. It looks mm -hmm. a lot like Eyes Wide Shut in that like huh. really like weird secret society kind of what is going on here at at this thing. Um, but I I I. From the stuff I've looked up, it seems like people are liking it a lot. Uh, mm. There's only eight e e episodes so far, but they are only half an hour each. So, there you go. Pitch number one uh, was from India. It is a series called Typewriter. Pitch number two is from South Korea. It's a series called Kingdom. And pitch number three uh, is a Dutch show a series called Aries. This is an interesting bunch of pitches. I've never heard of any of these. Yeah. And they're, all, um, they're all Netflix original, though I don't know exactly how loose they're throwing around that term. I know sometimes yeah. they buy up the right. Yeah, sometimes like original just stuff. means yeah. exclusive. Well, not 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 that, but like I, I think especially with the Indian one, mm. I think that was a web series. In oh, India. like it was not it was not necessarily made or produced by Netflix, but then they bought the rights to it after uh, and they give it, you know, the like international distribution. And because of that, mm. I think they now somehow in have the right to be like, it's a Netflix original. So they do that uh, a lot. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm not into zombies, never okay. have been, so I'm not real interested in Kingdom. Uh, for Ares, the co <laughs> the concept of a spooky student club kind of intrigues me because, like, I watched mm -hmm. uh, The Social Network earlier this year, and that movie's sure. really about getting into all of these, like, 
<laughs> semi occult, like a cult esque Harvard societies and the concept of that, but it's legitimately horror based, is kind of intriguing. But the show seems eh, too dark. Like more dark, okay. more more distressing sure. than thrilling. Fair enough. I'm gonna go with a typewriter. I like that it's a. I, I I could go for a good haunted house story, and I sure. know there's like a a rich entertainment culture in India that I've never seen anything from. And like when right, you think yeah. of Indian cinema, I think of like the uh, the musicals, the big sweeping romantic musicals. Bollywood I think they've stuff. got like a yeah. a decent run of like action movies. I've mm-hmm. never heard of an Indian horror story. So I'd like to see what one is. Exactly. Let's do typewriter then. I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So it's only one season, five episodes. I believe they're about an hour long each. Um, Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to check it out. See what we got here with typewriter available on Netflix, at least here in the United States. So go. Good stuff. Well, that's what we will do next week. And again, the week after that, we will get back to Irredeemable Part 2. Uh, but yeah, Melissa, where can the people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. And I'm going to uh, plug something I never plug, which is my Pinterest that's also at WilkyWit. <laughs> so, you, you know, I've spent the whole episode talking about like beautiful outfits and like set design and yeah. cakes and stuff. This is go to my Pinterest where you can find where I collect pictures of all those things that I enjoy. Good. Good stuff. You guys can find me at Yo Kyle Springer on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, if you guys want to stay up to date with our shows, we are at The Whatnots on Twitter. Go like, share, subscribe, tell a foe, tell a friend, tell a ghost or a zombie, whatever you need to go do to help spread the word about our show. I think we're sitting at 92 subscribers still on YouTube. Uh, So we're Uh, (laughs) slowly moving up there, slowly getting there. I did the makeup. I I tried to do the Love Witch makeup. Yeah, there you go. Now I have to Uh, go out in public like this. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> One I, have to, day. I have to go to the grocery store and take groceries <laughs> to my 70 year old neighbors like this that's great uh but yeah that uh if you guys could help spread the word that would be great we are trying to reach 100 subscribers on our youtube channel before the end of the year uh so if you guys can help us out with that that would be wonderful that being said, this is episode 128, I believe, right? One, Yeah, 128 of the Whatnots Review Show. We will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.